get you all comfortable. So we will start as you are already with the roller down the length of your spine. You want to have your tail at one end and your head at the other. Be sure you're fully supported there. If you want to use a ball between the thighs, you can hug it in and that will help ensure that the feet stay a little more narrow. And you can really feel the inside line of your legs helping you connect you to your little abdominals. It should be just slightly in front of the knees. And you want to drape your shoulder blades down around the curves of the roller underneath you. So we take the arms out to the side, palms up, arms extended, perpendicular to your torso. Just do a gentle rocking here, side to side. And turn your head away from the side, just sinking into. To feel a little rotation in the back. As you get the massage between the step below. Shift in the weight, you'll feel in your body, you'll feel the weight shift in your feet. And then when you're ready, come back to center. Ground your feet firmly, feel big tip of the foot, pinky tip of the foot. And then as you inhale, you curve the arms up, embrace the arm over the chest. And as you exhale, pull the arms open slowly out and down, reach the back of the hand into the ground. And the arms rise simultaneously. And then release to the floor at the same time. Tempo, the same pace, touching the floor with both hands and we lift again. Exhale, the belly sinks, pull the navel to the spine as you have something completely. Inhale, let the whole body expand with the breath, the chest rising, also the ribcage widening here. And then exhale, knit the wrists together as the lungs empty. And we'll do one more. It breaks over the chest wall, and then exhale, pull the arms apart, and pull the magnets apart through the air above. Now we lift the arms up and reach the fingers to the ceiling. Inhale, side the hands up and flash, hold the shoulders off the roller, exhale, pull the legs down. Inhale, so lift the arms, the legs follow. Exhale, and pull the weight in the scapula. As they sink towards the floor, the arms settle down into that weight. Rising again, follow goes downward, exhale, sinking the blades, the chest broaden. Let's do another one like this. Exhale and release the arms down slowly. Here as you inhale, turn the palms forward and exhale, block the arms down at your side, like down through your fingertips. We lift the arms up to the ceiling as you inhale, exhale, reach them behind you, feel them stretch that length to the abdominal wall as well as the arms. Reversing the directions, arms lift and then exhale and roll. You want to move slowly enough that you feel the effort of lifting the arms and then the effort of resisting gravity as the arms go back. And then bring the arms forward again and exhale, slide them down long at your side here, reach for the end of your mat. Lift it again as the arms go to 90 degrees, the blades sink, and then as the hands go back to the ears, the blades slide towards your waist. Arms moving up, drawing that arc in the air, and exhale, continue all the way forward and down, arms in parallel throughout this movement. One more time to lift up and then exhale to stretch back. Hold the ribs grounded here, feel some work in the abdominals against the weight of your arms. And then continue all the way forward and down. From here, hands to your shoulders, elbows pull in low by your waistline, you circle them up, out wide, around and down. Scoop the air up with the inner rotation of the arm, and externally rotate around here. Draw the perfect circles in the air with your elbows. To warm up the shoulder joint. Club and release in the pecs as well as in the upper back. Well, this over here, feet are grounded if you're sitting in the quicksand. Come back to center and now reverse. Elbows go low and wide, lift up forward around the neck. Hands to the top of the shoulder blade. While you do this, when the elbows go out, you feel it stretch through the inner arm and the front of the armpit, and then the stretch also continues into the chest wall. And go ahead and move your scapula so you get that massage of the weight shift on top of the roller and into the wrist. One more like this. And then extend the arms along with your side, palms down. We lift the arms for four circles, going up and back. 
you're working level, the, the ribs are grounded, and you circle wide around and forward, reach out through your fingertips, and the arms are parallel to put the palms down and lift again. All the way from back as you inhale, all the way wide forward and around your waistband as you exhale. So more like so, reaching up, stretching back, and then exhale, going a little further out into space with every repetition. We're doing one more this way. Feet are nice and steady here on the floor. Plug that ball between the legs, easing it to help keep your body grounded. And we take the arms out wide, lift the arms as they approach the ears, and then exhale, slide them forward and down. Tap the fingers to the mat at the same time, and then reach out again. Exhale, push the air down with the substance of the air with the moving through water. And again, sweep it back. Exhale, reach up, press forward, lengthen all the way down towards your heels. And one more time. And then from here, let's get the diamond arms, thumbs together, index fingers together. The hands are in the same plane as the forearm. And then we bring the whole shape back, that we're pressing thumb to thumb, index finger to index finger, reach the arms behind you, grabbing your face. Exhale, go an arc through the air with that diamond arm shape. So here you're literally rolling the collarbones inside the chest, take the arms back, the collarbones roll backwards towards your throat. And then they roll forward towards your navel as you bring the arms down and close the hands to the thumb. Light press hand to hand for up to the side of the arm as you do this. Feel the shifting of the weight in the shoulder blades and the shoulder. One last one. And exhale forward to the air. All right, then we can slide off with the roller. We put it aside. And then we're moving into hundred and six rounds sitting. So tall heels are grounded, legs together. Lift your chest and look at the horizon. Looking down towards your belly, curl the thumb up and start to roll your front your spine down. You're going over the sacrum, down to the hips, to the waist, to the ribs, to the tip of the scapula, legs fold in, legs extend, arms at your sides, start pumping. And run. Five feet here, exhale, five more. Really press whatever you can through the edges of your feet, maybe the inside of the knees, maybe some part of the thighs will connect. Even if they don't touch, pull them towards each other here. Curve up the legs and below abdominal wall. So you're high here, looking down your nose at the navel, keeping the head lifted, the upper abs engaging to pull the chest forward and down. Length of the arms and the arms tight by your side. So you're kind of gathering in the outer side of the rib cage with the inner edges of your arms. Each one here, really stretch. The legs are flowing up through your fingertips, across the rib, up and down the wall. And one more breath. Come up a little higher, a little deeper, use your abs a little bit more. And then pull everything in to lay your head down. And we can stretch the legs forward and the arms up in the air and then back for roller. So look up and back at the ceiling and bring your gaze forward directly above you. Take the arms up, lift the head, neck, and chest. Exhale, pull your body forward, bring over your legs, stretch here. So options here could be using um, weights under ankles, using a bare band around your legs, reach forward with the legs. The arm height will vary depending on your ability to control your descent. If the arms are too high and you fall through the movement, try lowering the arms when you start to go out of control. So lift the arms here, lift the head. Now the shoulder blades are coming a little bit forward as you come into flexion with your spine back over your legs. Stretch it out, the hamstrings are tight, and bend the knees to go. And then you press the feet away, rolling back. Try to take your time and feel every inch of your spine sink into the ground. Don't miss any of it. To do that, part of what you have to do is allow the back to bend. So coming forward, suck the waist back, dive over your legs, lifting the waist into the space behind you. And then as you roll back, Watch that your shoulders are relaxed and watch the position of your hands. Should be challenging, but not overwhelming. You want to get down inch by inch by inch into the ground. That would really well make your choices. So here, we bring the arms forward and around, and we'll reach for the TheraBand for the single circles. First, just pull your right knee into your chest and hug it in tight. 
He did he stirs here simply the knee on the hip joint. And then reverse the circles. Do a little stretch across the glute and the upper outer hip as well. And then we'll take the band up to the foot. Center of the band to the ball of the foot and the arch. And lift the foot up towards the ceiling. I give your elbows down and forward by your hips, by your hips. Lift the leg and feel the stretch of the back line of the leg. You can bend if it's necessary, straight if you can, and then point and flex a couple of times while lifting the foot. Feel both toe and toe ball here. Now, soft plank, we reach the metatarsals, tarsals, the balls of the feet, and we circle inhale across the body, keeping the right hip rounded. Exhale low, out around. Exhale, rotate the leg, swing out to the right. End at the top of the movement at the end of the exhalation. You reach the long through both legs. And be sure you keep the body rounded. So you're pushing through the right hip even before the leg is left. You press down to the left side of the body even before the leg moves over to the right. Keep going further and further out into the back. You want some strength in the arms, some grounding through the upper arms into the floor. Here for one more. Rotating the leg internally, the neutral at the bottom, externally rotate it as it goes out to the side, neutral at the top, and we pause. Give the leg a little bit extra stretch, and then let's reverse out to the side and exhale. Low you go, drag it over, pull it up. Work to keep the two pelvic pads on the mat. Imagine the whole pelvic girl filled with sand or concrete. For the weight of it sinking into the floor as you stretch the leg away from that. You want to find both the length and the mobility of the leg and the stability and heaviness connection of the pelvic girdle into the floor. The breath should be continuous and really work it. So short inhale, longer exhale. You almost run out of air at the top of the rupus. So you really feel the contraction through the abs. Stop here at the top and we'll take. So the edge of the band in the right hand, rotate the leg externally and pull the leg out to the side without tipping your weight off of the left side of your mat. So you keep that left hip rounded. You can rock the leg gently, slowly towards the right shoulder and away. And then exhale to pull the leg up to the ceiling, switch hands here, now the left hand holds the band. Extend the right arm and look at the hand as you cross the leg over, tipping the hip up. And then pulling the foot back towards your left shoulder. Go to where you feel the stretch that works for you, both in the hamstring and the left glute and into the low back. The right shoulder blade can draw as heavy into the back surface. So you're rotating the lower part of your body in one direction, the upper part of the body in the opposite. Exhale, let's come down from the left shoulder to the waist to the right glute to lift the leg up. Pull it back in a little bit, give it an extra tug, an extra stretch. And then we can fold that knee into your chest, embrace it in tight, bend is off, and then let that leg stretch forward, parallel to the other one. Maybe shake the foot out and feel that ease that release the length and the weight in the right side. So here we pull the left leg in and we start with a tug and hug in. And then we're doing the little circle stirring the knee. But you move the thigh bone on the socket. Just a few here. And then when you complete the circle, reverse the circles. Already noticing you can keep the pelvis steady while you're moving the leg. Easier with the knee bent, there's less load away from center. But you still might want to think about it. All right, so now here we complete the bend on the left foot. Extending the leg up towards the ceiling, whatever that is for you. And then a couple of point flexes to the feet, elbows skimming forward to both the neck length and heel. Elbow toe, toe ball heel. And in a soft point, and we begin to circle across the body. You now reach left leg to the right, exhale, go forward low, around. So pivoting here from your elbows on the mat next to your waist and to your hips. Reaching out long, keep going further and further away from center as long as you keep the whole torso stable on the ground. Going spiraling on the hip socket. 
feels great in the joint and actually helps you work more muscles in the leg. And let's take it over one more time. We're all the way around, end at the top of the exhalation and reverse out to the left. Exhale forward, reach. We're over, right side heavy, leg moves left. Left side heavy, then the left leg moves to the right. So where you get the stretches in your leg, maybe it's all the way around. And continue with the breath. If you're finding it too easy, shorten the inhale, lengthen the exhale. So you feel that contraction across the abdominal wall. We'll do one more circle here because it feels so good. Go all the way over, lift it high. And now left hand pulls the bandage with the left leg out, possibly your right hand on your right hip bone press to increase the stability there. Push it into the floor, rock the left leg towards your left shoulder. Then we'll exhale to lift the leg up to the ceiling. Switch hands, right hand now is going to hold your band. As you take the leg over, lift the hip, the waist, the ribs, not the shoulder blade. Pull the leg towards your right shoulder. Look out along your arm, over the fingertips, across the room. And you rotate the left leg internally from the thigh, not from the knee, not from the foot. Put in a little bit more as we, to increase the stretch. And now we're coming back down to lower the hip. The leg lifts up high to the ceiling. Pull the leg back a little bit more. Find the stretch you want in the belly of the hamstring, not at the ends. And then we fold the knee into your body and hug it in. Again, after the stretch, we have a little compression here. Both are good for the joints. And then we stretch the left leg forward. Oh, feels so much better. Now it matches the other leg, right? So from this point, let's bring the right knee into the chest, hold onto the back of the thigh, lift the left leg up, and we're rolling forward and up, upper curl to come up to sit near the front of your mat for rolling with the ball. So bring your hands to your shin, elbows wide and forward, look down into your navel, waist pulls back. You lift the tail and start the rolling, roll the shoulder blades only, exhale to come up to your balance point. You want to inhale maybe just to the tip of the scapula, so the exhale is your still going back, and then that will bring you all the way forward where you started. Really press the edges of your feet together. Also think, pull the hands into the leg and push the legs out into the hands. So that firms up the inner arm, but also firms up your core. Of course, by looking at your abs, you can increase the curve through your whole spine, not just your neck. And that makes it smoother and easier for you to roll. We'll do one more, where everyone's on a mat surface that's Soft enough, comfortable enough for your spine. And now we're moving into the abs series. So right hand to right ankle, left hand below the right knee on the shin. Lift the left leg and you push both legs out and away as you take your spine down, one inch, one vertebra at a time. Deep upper right foot and pull that knee tight. Inhale and switch the legs. And exhale, switch again. Always outside hand to the ankle, left hand, left ankle, then right hand, right ankle. You're pressing down, you're pushing up at the shin, and you're lifting your head here to the length of the back of your neck. One more time, we're going to end with the left leg in and pull the right leg in to meet at one hand to the shin, the legs together like a human leg. So inhale, arms and legs reach up and away from each other without collapsing out of your upper arm. Curl, circle wide with the arms and embrace the legs into your body. You stretch the fingers, you reach to your toes, you embrace everything in on a long exhale. Reach again. Hold yourself up, don't let your head fall backward in space. If your head falls back, it means the arms are going too far back for your ability to control the upper ab work. Two more, switch out, reach long, pull it all in. And one more time. The angle of your arms and legs can change with each repetition. And now rest your head down, lower your feet. We'll do a little bit of froggy here. So arms can open up to the side and you let your knees fall open. And then exhale and close them. A little bit of stretch here across the inner thighs. And then close the legs together so the feet are grounded. So more like this. And then pull the legs together. Now here, pull both knees into your chest. Come to your upper curl. Come up and try to come into the lower part of your rib cage. Extend the right leg up. Look down the belly. Stretch the left leg forward. Scissors. We switch the legs, 
or goes up or goes down, they pass in its stride. It is very tempting to look up at your feet and keep your gaze low. With the head lifted, you look across the room, just over the floor at the horizon. Keeping the chin tucked down in towards your sternum and the back of the neck elongated, the front curls back into the back. Try to reach as high above the leg as you can, but then if you need to, as long as you still feel the stretch at the back of the leg. And then we're taking both hands behind the head, pull the head up, pull the elbows down and in, legs zippered together for double leg, lower leg. So you reach the legs across the ceiling, take them as only as far as you feel the abdominal wall engaging and protecting the spine, and then we pull the legs up, take your time here and keep the sacred grounded. So you push the legs forward. You want to be cautious with this. Don't worry about the distance. You can get a ton of good work, a ton of good work in your abs, supporting you, even if you only move your feet a couple of inches. If you go too low, you're at risk of really um, like displacing the vertebra or the vertebral discs. So you want to build your strength into this very gradually. And reach again once more. Pull that head up. Pull the head forward, feel that work in your upper abs, holding the upper abdominals. And now we twist to the right, move forward and up as you bend the right knee, and then twist to the left. Roll across the tip of the shoulder blades, try to feel that work in the oblique abdominal wall here. The opposite hip is grounded as you twist away from it. Leg stretches long, and then you pull it in tight as you twist to the other one. We're going to do one more set here. It's less elbow to knee and more armpit to inner thigh. That will bring you up higher and deeper. Come back to center, lower everything down, and then we'll all be glad to stretch the legs forward and the arms back. Open up the front line of your body, feel that way. Take a deep breath in, side the air out, pull the belly tight. And then we're lifting the arms, start to lift head, neck, and chest, coming forward. Exhale up the back, over the legs, and we sit upright with the arms in front. So we are press the arms lightly down, lift up to the heart. We're tall, you should have a little arch in your back. And then look down, you put the back of your head, spine stretch, you go out forward and over, pull the waist back into the spine, into the space behind you, back down, press down through your heels, your sit bones, and lift your back inch by inch from the bottom to the top. And then exhale all the way over. Eyes look down your nose. You're tipping your chin towards your chest. You bring the back of the head forward out of the over in an arc. You dive all the way onto the beach. And then you sink into the sand and you come all the way up, lifting the front here with your hearts like really a little balloon. And looking down, going over, head, neck, upper back, middle back, low back. We'll sequence the spine through this movement. And we're blowing up from the bottom to the top of your so you're back up that wall. We're tall here, this is your highest point, and then we're taking it down and over again to hold on to the legs and stretch. So hold wherever you can, and then pull your waist back. Notice how your shoulder blades come around towards the front of your body as your rib cage pulls back. And a little bit of lifting as if you're wrapping your body around the ball, resting on your back. And then let's we'll slide the heels in, come up to sitting for a good balance and a rocker. So you can hold on to the back of your thighs easier, arms inside the legs, and on top of the ankle for difficult. So we'll extend the right leg up, stretch the back of the leg here, and then exhale coming back. We'll get that balance on your sacrum. Left leg extends. Stretch it, shoulders stay relaxed and down. Bring the edges of your feet together, right leg goes here. You want to keep the leg narrow if possible, right? So think about the foot extending, put it in line with your shoulder. And then pull it back, both legs. They go up simultaneously. You can rotate your hands a little to the outside of the leg. And then rotate them in as you bring your arms inside the knees and down. Right here. And then exhale to fold. We'll take it one more time and then roll. So inhale here, find a nice firm connection, maybe at the base of your calves. 
look down, and have like the tail over your shoulder blades. Exhale, come forward and up, and find your balance. Nice, and we do that again. Try to work the leg in the side equally, so you roll in a straight line down the mat and then up the mat. Do it again. Balance point each time. Good, and one last one. Tuck your chin in, keep the upper back rounded, come to position, close the legs, extend your arms up. There's your teaser that you need to release some of the tension in your hips. And we're going to slide the slide down into the back. Easier to take your hands along your legs. Try to hold the legs in the air, come all the way down, and then the legs lift or corkscrew. So here, we draw small circles in the air with the feet. Arms press into the ground, circle the legs over to the right, forward and down, over to the left, all the way up, complete the circle and reverse. We're focusing on keeping the hips really pretty steady here on the mat. There'll be a shift in weight around the sacrum, but you're thinking legs to right, the left hip is heavy, circle forward, now the right hip is down as you bring the legs around to the left. That'll make you work those low abdominal muscles to hold the body stable here on the ground against the movement and weight of your legs. And again, each circle is a short inhale and a longer exhale. You push up through soft toes. You don't want to overplant the feet. They'll tend to cramp if you do that. So think of reaching more through the balls of the feet through the metatarsis there. One more set. Use that long exhale to engage the abdominal wall. And one more time going left to right. Perfect. So hold, hold the knees in, embrace them in, and then we'll roll forward and up to come up to sitting for soft. So you open the legs, maybe sit back more in the center of your mat. If your hamstrings and low back are tight, elevate yourself up on a yoga block or two, and then extend the arms forward and slightly in front of your chest. Push down through your arms and lift up through your heart here, and then we rotate to the right and dive over the back of the left hand to the outside of the right leg. Spiral the body more before the right shoulder back and looking back towards your hand. Lift to come up with that rotation and then unwind and spin in the other direction. Back through the right hand to the outside of the left leg. And again, pull that left shoulder blade across the body on a diagonal towards your right hip. Can you see your fingertips behind you? Look for them. And then we're coming all the way upright, set up here, and then spiral to the other side. And then lift you out and over. You're even like blowing the head and trying to bring your ear to the opposite knee. And then add that little bit of extra rotation to the upper back as you enter through your left knee. Pull yourself upright, center, and again to the left. Exhale all the way over as you dive and stretch the arms in two opposite directions. Pull your body long here. And we lift to come up. Reach and then lower the arms. Pull the legs together. And we'll flip over onto our stomachs here for stretch. So today, without the roller, we're going to lay on the front line of your abs, pull the hands back by the armpits or a little closer towards the chest, elbows reach up and back. So try to press the top of the legs and the top of your feet into the ground. Head floats off the mat. Pull the elbows back down and in. Propel the chest forward and up. Lift here, gaze this up the wall in front of you, and then iron your body down from the tail to the waist, to the shoulders, to the head and neck. And again, as so you're pulling back with your hands, move over your hands, to the chest forward, and bring your gaze up, pull the weights together here as you open the front of the ribcage, and down you go again. Head puts off the mat so you can still breathe, and we do one more. Pull away from your pelvis, keep the front of the hips pressing into the mat as you rise, and then you can release on down. From here, push back into a child's pose, round your back, curve it. Let the weight of your hips sink towards the floor. Breathe into the low back. And then we'll slide forward again, prep yourself up on your forearms for single leg. So your elbows pull back, your chest pulls forward and up, pull the stretch of your abs. Kick the right heel in, pulse one, two, 
and down, double left, plus one and two, and down to the right. You may feel that stretch. I know I do across the front of the thigh, the quad muscles. This is happening because you're working your hamstrings, but you're still pushing down with the arms and forward up with the chest. Also try to feel that stretch in the skin across the abs. Collar roots wide and high. You're pulling the blades together and down your back. There's no collapsing through the body into the floor. You're pushing the ground down so you can lift up through the front of your body like you're wrapping yourself around the front of a ship. You want to speak your heads on the old sailing ships. One more set. Pelvis is heavy on the mat so you're not rocking your butt up and down. And now let's go ahead and lay down. Left cheek to the mat, which you turn your head to the right. Overlap your hands high on the back here and drop your elbows down low. You take a deep breath in. And then as you exhale, kick three times both legs. Plus one, two, three. Push the feet down, the arms reach back. You center and lift your chest. Come up into that cobra position and you're down again, turning to the left. Pump the air out of your body. One, two, three. Reach down. Reach back, your arms can press an imaginary ball between them and try to squeeze the back of the rib cage together. Coming down again to look right. And you pulse. We're going down and lift again. So if you have the, well, the width across your chest, you can intertwine the thumbs, keep the wrist straight as you lift up into your spine and then bring it down with the left one set. Three beats. Once the feet are grounded, we lift again. And then you can lower and again, push off the floor, come up into your child's pose. Of course, you want to be sure that feels good in your knees. This is another way to stretch out your quads. Hang your head down. You should feel that support for the skull so the neck can relax. And then we stack the spine from the bottom to the top. And we turn around. We're going to work on neck pull today. So to start this exercise, you can put their bed, their arm to feet. This is a more difficult version of your roll up. So you're going to sit upright, perch on your sits bones, and feel the length in your spine as well as the length of your legs. And then we're going to keep the spine elongated front back and side as we tip back. So back in a plank. And then you'll get to the point where you need to curl the tail up, do an upright curl, and then roll your spine down into the ground one vertebra at a time. So coming up, lift the head, neck, and chest. Exhale, dive forward. And pull the strap back as you dive your head down and pull the head out towards your toes here. Try to elongate the spine as you believe the circle of the spine. Then stack your spine from the bottom to the top. Coming up. Then we do one more time like this with the back. So you reach back. It's a flat back. You maintain that little natural arch in your spine. When you come to the point, just watch your neck isn't over arched. Look down at your chest, look down at your abs, pull the tail up and roll the low back down. So that transition from a neutral plank to flex spine. Is important and you need to do it at the right time. So we're going to come up here, dive forward, head hangs down low, and then stack your spine bottom to the top. Okay, so now we're difficult without the bed. So you start with your hands behind your head, thumbs go along next to the little ribs, the base of the skull. You can intertwine the fingertips to support the skull and then pull the head up, pull the elbows up, and we reach forward through the legs. So this should be a part about five inches. So you lean back in your plank. And then when you know you can't support it safely, you look down, you pull your elbows down. You can even bring the arms forward slowly as you pull your body down to the ground with control. Yeah, and now to come up. Most advanced hands behind your head. That's inaccessible for a lot of us at this point in time. So the option would be to take your fist into your opposite palm, straight line elbow to elbow, and up, push into your arms, bend forward, and then you bring your hands behind your head 
and you pull the neck long as you dive over your legs, lifting your waist into your back line. Then stack the spine bottom to top, coming up. Do one more of those. So you lengthen the neck by pulling the head up, moving back. And then tuck and bring yourself down. Elbows narrow. You can reach the hands forward if you need to. So you have the control all the way to the floor. Coming up, fist into hand. Lift up, or you need it. Push the hand into the fist, vice and vice versa, and then back forward. Hold the neck long here. So the stretch in the cervical spine and then also in the thoracic spine. And then you stack all the way up here, bottom to top. Good. All right. Everyone felt safe in their backs, so you were making good choices. Great. All right, from here, onto your backs for shoulder bridge. You can roll back. And then extend the arms forward. The heels come in and maybe six to eight to 10 inches from your sit bones. You look straight up at the sky. Spread your feet into the floor and then try to pull the mat back with your heels. You begin with the pelvic tuck, curl the tuck forward and up and the knees going forward. You come up, you roll up onto the shoulder blades and then onto the top of the shoulder blades by slightly rolling to the outside of the arms. Then let's roll to the inner arms, the blades widen and the top of the shoulders curve up. You drape your upper back, your mid back, and the low back into the ground. <coughs> Release the tail all the way down to the end of the movement. And we do that again. There's a rocking action here through the pelvis as the tail moves forward and up. Push down through your feet, lift the hips, push down through the outer edge of the arm and the top of the shoulders and lift the chest and then lift the hips again. And then we're rolling to the inner arm with we'll the back widen and the upper back can drop down between the scapula. You curve the back as you're going down for that nice stretch to the waistline above the sacrum and then the sacrum rolls across the mat and through the tail and finding that lifted waistline again. One more like this. We're going to stay up once we're in hip extension in your bridge to do some marching. So we come down at the top of the shoulders, pull the scapula together underneath your body, narrow the knees in a little bit if you've lost the inner thigh connection. Pick up the right foot, bending the knee and then lowering it down, send into the right foot, parallel to the left one, push down with the right foot, lift up with the right glute, and then pick up the left glute. Knee folds from an elevated hip position. Our goal is to really keep the body elevated, even if you're only standing on one foot, right? So you want to consider that when you lift the knee, you also lift that pelvic cap. That gives you a little bit extra lift. And even when you lower it, you're still trying to keep the glutes engaged to keep that side of the hip in the air. Really press to the top of the arms and press to your standing foot. We're going to do one last one on the left. This will build a lot of strength into the back line of your body. And then push this up a little higher in case they drop down. Now roll to the inner arm, go the legs move sideways away from your spine as you curve your spine down along the midline of the mat underneath you. Come all the way down until the tail settles. And then coming on up. Uh, looks like. Peter is running on low battery, so we're just gonna let it, I guess, end when it wants to. All right. So Max, of course, is away having had his second little boy, and um, so probably just needs to be charged. Anyhow, so from here, the way so shoulder bridge, we're coming up to sitting for spine twist. So extend the legs forward, legs are together here, and you can elevate your hips up. Sorry, elevate your chest up. You're sitting right on your six bones, and then reach the arms out, go along with the fingertips. And legs are put together, we rotate to the right, pulse one and two, then and then to the left, twist one and two. If your hamstrings are tight, you'll feel a lot more mobility if you are sitting on the upper block or something even higher than that. From one side to the other, pulse the air out of your lungs, which along through your fingertips. Face, you go to the horizon as it comes center, 
but you kind of drop your gaze a little and look over the fingertips as you twist. And to the left, come back to center and lower the arms. And now for jackknife. So we can lay down on your back. If you're not used to doing this, it's a shoulder stand. You can also take your roller across under your glutes. And then we'll lay on back and keep rolling. Lengthen the arms at your side. If you have, you have the roller underneath you, you can press your hands into the top of the roller. So first, either way, whether you're on the mat or on the roller, Bend your knees into your chest and lift the leg, squeeze up together, and lift the left to the ceiling. Push them forward to your working level. You want to feel the abs, but just feel the back arch. And then we're pressing through the arms, lift the legs up to lift the hips, and then bring the legs up as high as you can without dropping the pelvis. Look up and back so you have some, some length in your neck. And then we press through your arms, lower the spine down. We push into the heel of your hands. You bring the hips down to whatever surface they're on and then take the legs out of the way. You're working level again. So slide the arms forward down the mat, press into the roller. We're coming up with the legs. Exhale to pull the hips up, lift the legs to your working level. And then as you come down, you might, you're probably going to lower the legs over your face a little bit. That diminishes the load from the center. And then you roll it up if you need to, you can bend your knees into your chest as you go down. That's good. And of course, if you need to, you can go up and take your hands to your hips to add a little bit of stability there. Push up again. Lift and then down you go. Now in this exercise, one thing that's really important is you can't just feel the weight going down into the ground. You cannot just do this successfully. You only feel the heaviness of gravity pulling you to the floor. So try this thought when you go up again. So once you go, once you go up and your legs are in the air, I want you to feel like you're getting um, your body is a conduit for either water or fire. So sometimes I go up and I think as I'm lifted here, right? I think that like there's a, a fountain or a geyser underneath me. So the water comes up from the center of the earth through my shoulders through my hips and up and out through the soles of my feet, right? And then you try to keep lifting. You can check this if you have your elbows bent and support your hips with your hands and see if you can get that feeling of lift through the glutes and lift through your feet so that you're only lightly supporting your hips and you're not like dropping your weight of your pelvis into your wrists and into your elbows. So you want that feeling that the body still wants to go up even though you're staying there, right? Besides the water image, you can also think that your body's like a plane and the smoke coming out of the feet, out of the toes, and drifting up into the sky. And then if you're coming down very slowly, press it into the arms. So I know in yoga they also talk about this. There's the upward lift and the downward press. We just talked about opposition and Pilates, but you can get there sometimes with an image that you can't figure out how that actually happens physically through your body. So it's just something to play with, to think about and to practice, because you don't want to just um, throw your legs back so far that you end up like cranking into your neck. You still need that support across your shoulder blades and you've got to figure out how to keep the energy going up and to stay in that movement. Because eventually in the more advanced um, mat work, we do like some leg positions there. So you could actually try this if you wanted. So you go up into your jackknife, support your hips like you just did, and then just try to lift one foot to the ceiling and across the ceiling a little bit, and back, and then the other foot lifts and reaches up and forward, and then back. So that reach through the toes, the reach up energetically through the pelvic girdle, through the legs. You'll keep you elevated there eventually, not when you're first learning this. But that's one of the things that we're working towards in the more advanced Pilates work. Okay, so good. So now from the jackknife, we're going into our side kicks. So let's lay on your side. And you'll be propped up on your elbow if you can, otherwise it's on the arm and lay your feet down. On your arm. You're pulling that bottom elbow in slightly towards your armpit. 
and then your top hand should be pressed in front of your chest. Flex those feet, and then lift the top leg up and reach out through that top leg. As you inhale, you pull the leg forward and you pulse one and two. Point the foot, take the leg back, and you reach back one and two. Flex the double pulse forward. Point to stretch the leg back, open the hip, and use your glute here to give yourself that hip extension. One more time. What we're really working for here too is stability through the body so you're not rocking forward and away from the leg. So now we come back to center and lower the leg down. Bye, thanks for coming today. Thanks. And then we're going to lift the leg externally, point to lift the leg up, flex and bring it down long and close. Point to rise, flex to lower. Point lift and flex down, reversing, flex up, point stretch it away. This is easier to stay stable through the torso because we're still in that same line of movement. Flex one more time, point lengthen out. Now double the peg, bend the knee up towards the ceiling. Pull the knee to your shoulder, extend the leg up, flex the foot and press the leg down. So drag it in, lift the knee, lift the foot, flex and press the whole leg out and down. One more just like that. Slide, lift, extend, flex and close. Tap the heel down, keep the flex foot and lift the leg up. Point the foot, bend the knee. Tap the toe to the leg and skip forward all the way down. Flex the foot at the end of the movement to lift. Point bend. Keep your top hip forward. We all want to leg roll back a little bit to get more lift through the leg. So realistically, the leg is coming forward a bit. It's not directly above the other leg. One more to go high. Point the foot, bend the knee. Pull the head long and away from the foot. Now here, Rajasha, you are gonna to have to work harder into your core to hold your body on your side seam. So you lift the leg, you bring the leg forward with the self-pointed foot, going up, rotate the leg a little internally as you bring it behind you, it comes back to neutral as it crosses over. So really press your bottom leg, press your hand in front of your chest and pull the elbow support for your head closer into the armpit. The more you access these muscles, the more you're gonna be stable here on your mat. Do it one more time. Try not to lean back as the leg goes forward. Do not lean forward as the leg goes back. You'll feel that work in the center of your feet, right? And now let's take the leg back, open the hip, rotate the leg externally, bring it forward around. It's back to neutral at the bottom. And reach, pull the head out in one direction, pull the leg out in the other. Try to keep the waistline long here and the body nice and strong. One more. All the way around, rotate the leg on the socket. Good. And from here, let's go into your figure four position. And you push the knee away from your face with your elbow or your forearm. Bring the bottom leg up and then down. We lift and then lower. Lift again and bring it down. Lift, hold it up and circle. Around it up one and two and three. Come to the top, reverse your circles. Around it up one and two. And three, lift it here, reach out and lower it down. We're going to just go onto your stomach here for grasshopper before we do the other side. So you land your stomach, overlap your hands under your forehead. And so you're going to the legs, let's start with just one leg. So you're going to pick the right leg up, pull the right pelvic half into the ground, and exhale, lower the leg. And now the left. And this is going to be hard. If either you're weak in your glutes or you're tight in the hip. So be a combination of both of those things also. So you're really going to press the front of the pelvic girl into the ground as you pull the leg up. And that way you're sure you're working it from the right spot. So we don't want to take this from the low back. We're going to take it from the glute. That's a big strong muscle. You're going to think of curling the tail down as you lift the foot. As you lift the thigh. Now, heels together, lift both legs and open and close clapping. This is the grasshopper portion. It's a slight little rebound here through the legs and a gentle tap and release. One more. The thigh should be skimming the mat as high up and off the ground as possible. And then lower down, child's pose. Round your back, curve it. Stretch out that little part of your spine, maybe push them out of the way and pull back through your waist. 
deck is going bottom to top, and we're coming up to do the other side. I'm going to face the screen, even if I have no idea whether it's actually recording. <laughs> So pull the elbow in, reach out long through the heel. And I'm oh, sorry, we're keeping the hands in front of the chest for this. So you lift the top leg, flex the foot, and inhale, swing it forward and pulse one, two. Point the foot and reach the leg back and pulse one and two. Double big forward and pulse and stretch it away. Flex going forward here, reach out through the six foot tail, get more stretch in the hamstring, and then reach the leg back. Come back to center. Lower the leg, rotate externally, plunk to go up, flex to reach down. But drag the legs apart and exhale, squeeze them together. Do it again, pull the weight of the leg as you stretch it up and the weight of your legs to resist gravity down. Now flex to lift and point to lengthen out. Flex to rise and point to stretch. One more time here, working for some external rotation through that leg. Bottom one heavy into the ground. Double K, slide the foot in. Knee to the shoulder, lift the foot, flex, and press out and down. Stretch it long, and then foot stretch in your waist. Pull in, extend up, flex, and press out the long way. One more time like this. All the way down here, tap, reverse to lift. Point the foot, bend the knee in. Skate the leg down your other leg. Reach long through both legs. Flex and rise, point bend. As you're doing this against the wall, so your butt cheek doesn't fall back through the wall. All the way forward and down here, and one more time. Here we go. And now for Ron Dijon. So really brace yourself into the ground. Use whatever you have as a connection, find it. So here we bring the leg forward, rotate up, around, back behind you, and then through center. Oh, apparently that's the end of the recording. Didn't know what that looked like. So stretch it out and around. Circle here. Hopefully anyone doing this from the video will just rewind and go back into the other side. Okay, and now let's reverse the circle. So we get back into the glute, rotate the leg externally, lift, forward, around and down. And then press out, reach, circle here, forward and around, and do that one more time. All right, good. Here, figure four. Wrap your hand between the legs, push the knee away, and then we bring the bottom leg up and then down. Inhale, lift and then lower. Lift again and bring it down. Lift and hold. Circle around one, two, three to the top. Reverse the circles one, two, three to the top. Reach out and then lower the leg down. Okay, we're on our backs next. We're starting with a little teaser prep. So one of the easier ways to get up into teaser is just to begin by pulling your knees into your chest. You pull all of your hands to the back of your thighs and legs up together. You come lifting your head, neck, and shoulder upward, curl, and as you pull your body forward, you extend the legs to roll forward and up into a balance point here on your sacrum. Then release the arms, just feel that connection. Bring your hands back to your legs. Now you push the legs away from you as you start to roll back. And then as you go back with your sacrum, you may start to slowly bend your knees in and gradually pull the knees in as you bring your body all the way down to the floor. So it's really like it's a continual balance game. And we're gonna do that again just one more time. So check your chest, push the knees forward, you almost just rock forward here. To come up, you're still a little bit of a pelvic top, right? So you're behind your sits bones. Extend the legs, elbows wide will help you like sink back with your rib cage into the space behind you. And then we curl the tail up. You start to go over your sacrum. You can reach the legs forward a little bit so that you slow down the, the movement to the ground and then gradually pull the knees back in. Pull your body down onto the mat. All right, we're going to come up one more time and then do a different variation. So lift your head, back your chest, exhale up forward. Good, and then bend your knees, grab hold of your bare bands, taking the bands around the feet. 
teasers one of the hardest exercises in the immediate mat, and along with the jackknife, along with the neck roll. You know, different bodies do different things more easily than others. Um, but this was challenging for so everybody. So you're gonna hold your legs up, these bent, elbows wide and forward. And now just hold your body position where it is as you stretch the legs away from you and then back. Nice. Good job. And then reach the feet forward, stretch into the support of the strap, and then forward on that heel. Do it again. And then from you've got to keep that tail pulled up and the legs pulled back. Now extend the legs up, lower the legs a fraction, lift them. Lower the legs just a little bit, lift them here. More like that. So you go up very good. Pull the knees in. Now look at your feet as you curl the tail up. You're going to push the legs forward, toes at eye level, bring your shoulder blades down, your heels are down, and then lay your head back. Good job. Everyone feel okay with your backs? If not, please see me at the end of class. And then we lift the head up. Look at your abs. Pull the elbows wide and start to pull the knees in as you come up. Bring your, keep your toes at eye level. To come back where we kind of started, we do one more. So lift the tail, roll back over your sacrum, push the feet forward into the band. And push the legs all the way out. You're imprinting down. Your shoulder blades touch when the heels are grounded. And then last time to lift. Scoop the, the back of the legs up. Keep the legs in if you need to. Come all the way in. And then we bend the knees, lower the heels. And we keep the legs to the side. Okay, we're going to go into swimming here using the roller. So lay on your stomach with it, arms extended over the roller here, between the wrist and elbow. And then legs like the back behind you, cover the feet the ground, good between arms. Pull the shoulder blades down your back, pull the chest forward up, lift to the stretch in your abs, and then start lifting your legs. Working from the glutes. Good. Heart is up, eyes are up. And you can stretch it out and lay it down. All right. Roll it to the side. Chest pose again. And then we're coming up for seal. So when you're ready for that, just sit in front of your mat. Your knees are open wide. Bring your arms between your legs and wrap your hands around the outside of your ankles. Pull the tail up, pull the waist back, and walk back to balance on your sacrum. We're going to open and close the legs on the exhale. So clap three times, exhale one. Two, three, down at your navel, going back to balance the scapula, clap one, two, three, and then come up. Now you may just clap once, that's okay, but you're going to try to suspend your body in midair and clap one time, two times, and eventually three times. It might be quick, so that's all right. So you roll, lift your tailbone up as you clap, and that gives you a moment of suspension. Just play with it, keep your head and neck off the ground. You open and close when you're seated. You roll back. One, two, three. And then you're coming forward and clap again. All right. And then lower your legs. Just open the knees and bend forward over your feet. Keep the feet stretcher and scoop your back. So the back of the ribs expand as you breathe in. Pull the nose and take the exhale out. Set your leg wide on the top, close your knees, and we're finished for today.